So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole's like a, a like dick theater. I've imagined your pants. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I think that's uh, uh, We're not sluts. We just love love. Hello, everyone. This is Angela. Wow, you're so... <laughs> Hello, sexy people. This is Bradford. <laughs> and you've called By the By After Dark. It is after dark. <laughs> it is, but I mean, it was like... It's like, evening time. Like, wow. Like, welcome to By the By After Dark, where we tell the naughtiest stories. Don't you want to hear the naughtiest stories? We should do naughty storytelling. Oh my God, we should. Yeah. And we should put it up on our Patreon page. <laughs> Only for our Patreon people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we can manage that. I think we can. Yeah, so welcome. Yes. Hello. Hi. Mm-hmm. How are you? Mm-hmm. And also for our Patreon folks, you should have this week received discount codes for the Pendulum Party if you're interested in coming out. That's right. Yeah, for our $10 and above, uh, you get a $10 discount to Pendulum Parties. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you should. that should be in your message box. Box. Yes, and the next one's coming up here in just a couple weeks. So Yay. less than that, I guess. The 19th. So 19th July. Of 19th. July. Pretty yes. excited for that. That's going to be lots and lots of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I know at one point in the recent past, I said I wasn't going to be here. It looks like I'm going to be here. So yay. Awesome. That trip got moved around a bit, I think. Even uh, so better. I know. Pretty stoked for that. Yeah. So my sexy ass will be up for grabs. <laughs> Still, I want to do an auction now. I want to auction my ass off. I wonder right. how much I could get I for like a charity. Two dollar. Two dollar. Two dollar. Two dollar. You're going to two dollar. <laughs> Sold for two dollar. Three fifty. Three fifty. <laughs> About that time, I noticed that this Girl Scout, Bradford's ass, was a paleo crustacean from the Paleolithic era. God damn you, Loch Ness monster! All right, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Oof, I haven't even been drinking. That, I'm I on my second sip of wine, and yeah. it's already coming We've this just way. started, and it's a really nice wine, too. It's so good. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh. Yes, and if you follow us on Instagram, uh, you'll have seen a recent boomerang of this wine. It's covered in dust, so only the best for our mm-hmm. for us while we record for our podcast listeners. So, yeah, we're yeah. spoiling ourselves It's tonight. a good one. It's a nice Hunter Valley Shiraz. Yeah. Delicious. Oh, we should do drunken wine reviews. Um, <laughs> drink a full bottle and then review the wine. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, yeah, what else do we have coming up? Um, we're 116 days away from Desire. Oh, my God, it's going to be here before we know it. I know. Um, so excited. We went to something tonight, and I bought something for my costume for mm-hmm. one of the nights. You did, and it is adorable Can't. and so cute, and I cannot wait to see you in it at Desire. And we're not going to tell you what where we went, but it was a theater kind of, it was a theater community thing. So, right. um yeah, so I but I saw something, I tried it on, Lola Lady loved it, mm-hmm. Angela loved it, and it was like, all right, I have to get you it. You have to get it, yes. So, yeah. So all you have to do is wait 120 more days <laughs> until I post a picture of me in it. <laughs> Psych! Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, so yeah, pretty stoked And we're still working on the uh, Aussie contingency. There's a few more that are considering it yes. so we'll see if we can get some more australians down there australia we're australians australia <laughs> by the time we go there we'll be australian hopefully yeah Woo. yeah so yeah just waiting on the ceremony you to be official betcha yeah mm. would be o o o official uh so let's talk about some of the this is going to be a random podcast and i apologize in advance for that we don't really have um, a, a great story arc, but we have a bunch of little things yeah. that we want to discuss. We just wanted to, to chat a bit. Yeah. We're yeah. just going to talk at you for a bit. Sit down, rest yourself, put your feet up. Uh, not if you're driving. Don't I, do I that. Saying, yeah. If you're driving, if you're driving, don't put your feet up. Uh, so after a constant listener, you will know that I, we were both in Adelaide, South Australia recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and afterwards we, Angela went home and I had a few days by myself there and I was, there was some stuff I wanted to give it a go, give it a try. And so what do you do? You get on the old interwebs and you look for sexy things to do. Well, there was a sauna that there's only one gay sauna in all of Adelaide. 
which is kind of a shame. I find that a little surprising because while Adelaide's not a huge place, it's big enough that I would have expected there to be more than one sauna. I completely agree. I mean, Adelaide's population is 1.2 million. Yeah. That's a so, bunch of that's a bunch of people. Yeah. Now, it is also for those in, in elsewhere in the world, not in Australia, it is known as the City of Churches. It's also known as the City of Serial Killers. They, to, they, apparently they go hand in hand. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody there, like Mr. H, eats their pizza with a knife and fork. <laughs> You can hear him now. He's going, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, it's, um, if you don't know about the Snowtown murders, look it up. Terrifying. Terrifying. Hashtag Radelaide. <laughs> uh, hashtag Badelaide. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it is the city of churches, but they have a, like a, a street that of nothing but strip clubs and, and. Kindly street. Yeah. Yes. Strip clubs. And it's like a, like a red light district, yeah. but sex work is not even decriminalized. They're looking at decriminalizing it mm-hmm. now. So anyway, so there's a single, single gay sauna and it looks pretty small online. So mm-hmm. I was like, I could do that. Uh, but while searching, there is a club X mm-hmm. in. Adelaide. There's actually two. One just a stone's throw from where I was staying and one a bit farther away. I still could walk to it, but it was a bit farther away. So looking at their website, Club X is a pretty common sex store in Australia and they're one of the major supporters of Sexpo. So I was like, oh, we sh- I should definitely check it out and see. I'd never been in a Club X before. Let's give it a go. So I look online and one of their shops in Adelaide, the one, the one that was farther away, is a bigger store. And it's got a lot more going on for it. It's mm-hmm. got video booths. It's got fast internet video booths, whatever. Wow. I know. Well, that's fancy. <laughs> it's got peep shows. Because the last thing you want in your video booth is dial up. <laughs> 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 That's actually a really good point. Um, but they do. If you look on their website, it does tout like the fastest internet porn in Australia kind of thing. Uh, but that is funny to get in there and you hear, <laughs> like, like, great. So I'm looking at the website right now. And it, it starts out with Club X has been at the forefront of adult entertainment in Australia for over 40 years. I mean. So they've been around for a while. It is. Yeah. But spoiler alert. When they were the forefront 40 years ago, they didn't change nothing. (laughs) So we are still 100% 1979 in, in, uh, in club X. Well, now they do. So on the, the picture for the uncensored internet booths, yes, it does have an image of porn playing on a screen Mm -hmm. and also a little coin slot thing. Like you used to like put your coin slot in and push down for your chewing gum in the little machines. Yep. Have we not upgraded to, like, cards or anything at this point? (laughs) Negative. It's still coins. Okay. But in their defense, it's still coins even in Amsterdam. Okay. So I've been to video booths in Amsterdam. It's still coins there. I've been to live peep shows in Amsterdam. Still coins. So you walk in with, like, your little change bag of You walk in with a change bag of euros. (laughs) I mean, realistically, though, how long are you expecting to be in there? Um, Most coins... How much does a $2 coin I think a $2 coin gets you eight minutes. In eight minutes, okay. I, I can jack off three times. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm yeah, hashtag professional. Enough. So, I mean, you only need a few coins sure. in your pocket. Okay. So we'll get to more on this once. I'm just telling you about what drew me oh, right, to this right. place. Sorry. Okay. So they've got the video booths. They've got these live peep shows. This one actually has a male sauna, a men's only area. It doesn't say male sauna. In fact, it's uh, Angela's now looking at the website. It says Ram. Capital R A M. Yes, what and what does that, does that stand for? I have no idea. Doesn't it say in the little thing? Uh, so it says Ram Lounge slash Mail Sauna. No, it doesn't. Okay. Anyway, um, I don't know what Ram means, uh, but I'm sure it has some like real, authentic men. That's what I'm going to say it means. Uh, anybody who wants to go check this website out themselves, Angela, what is it? It's clubx.com.au. There you go. So you can check out this website and what was so intriguing about it. Then they also have. Blue Cinema, Mm -hmm. which in Australia, they've got like gold cinema and it's like this really high end movies. You're sitting in these big comfy chairs. They serve you drinks. They like if you want only red Skittles, they'll bring you red Skittles. I mean, it's like (laughs) stupid. It's like one hundred dollars to see a fucking movie anyway. But this place touts 
blue class cinema because uh-huh. it's all porn. Hilarious. I liked the pun. So the long and short of it is I decided to go to Club X in Adelaide. Mm-hmm. So we get there. We, me, the royal we. <laughs> I'm bringing you, you along with you. me. I'm bringing, <laughs> I'm bringing y'all along with me. So I get there and it's this scary, scary, scary staircase, but it's right next to this Italian restaurant. Into the venue, not In, just into the cinema. Into this venue, okay. the whole venue. Yes. Cause like most, it's really funny. I, I, what I've found is like a lot of these venues mm-hmm. are never on the first floor. They're always on the second floor. A lot of like them are. Even in Sydney, the, some of the gay saunas mm-hmm. are either two or three stories up before they even start, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny. But because the like, naughty stuff can't be on the ground, apparently. So it's a scary staircase. And it's right next to this little cafe, Italian cafe. And there's a bunch of people out there. And I'm like, I'm just doing the first thing you do. is, And I, I know I can guarantee you all the fellas out there listening. All the male identifying people are uh, going to appreciate exactly what I said. You do the, the fly by, mm-hmm. which means you walk right past the door. You don't, you barely look at it, but you're staring at it through the corner of your eyes. You're checking it out. You're just glancing. And then you just keep walking on okay. because the first time you got to go past a place just to make sure that, do I even want to go in there? And I'm assuming most women in things like this, they just walk right on in. They don't fucking care. They just like... I can say that I would walk right on in, especially if there was a restaurant nearby where there's people sitting outside. Mm-hmm. Because if I were one of those people sitting outside and I saw somebody walk by and then walk back, I would think, A, are they lost? B, do they know where they're going? Or C, are they ashamed of where they're going? Yes. So, And the truth is all <laughs> of the above. So I knew this place had a back entrance. Uh-huh. So I thought, well, I'll walk around the block and see if I can find this back entrance. Fair enough. I couldn't. We'll explain why in a moment. Okay. Because I'm dumb as fuck, basically. Uh, But I couldn't. There was a little alley, and I walked down that alley that went into the center of the block. And then off that alley was another alley, and I walked down there. But it was, like, so residential. Like, people, there were Mm. garages and apartments. It was, like, very residential. So, like, there's no way it's back here. So I came back out those two turns, went back around the block all the way, and then was like, you know what? I'm just going to go in. So I went in. Up the scary stairs. And at the top of the stairs, there's four video booths. The internet so before you ever get to the store part? Correct. Okay. The first thing you are, the first thing after you get to the top of the stairs, you can only turn right. Mm-hmm. Directly in front of you are four internet booths. Okay. One door was closed. Mm-hmm. Three were open. And you look to your left and it's a door to outside uh, okay. with a back entrance. Oh, so you had to go up the stairs well, from the alleyway. Yes. So, but if it wasn't labeled, so how spoiler would you alert, know? I left that way yeah. just to see where the fuck it came out. Yeah. It was three or four turns zigzagging to get out from here. And it probably wasn't labeled. And either. it wasn't labeled. Yeah. You would have ne- if you didn't know, you'd yeah. have never known. So there was a little <laughs> hallway to the right of, of that. I'm not even sure what was back there. Maybe more video booths, okay. but it was unclear. You didn't go, you didn't go down I didn't the go down. Hallway? Well, it was short. It was like maybe three booths. Oh, okay. And it, they faced the the outside wall, so I knew it wasn't a peep show. Mm-hmm. So it almost has to be, um, it almost had to be a a. a, a so before you go any booth. further, did you go? This was on a weeknight. Yeah, this was Thursday okay. night. Was Wednesday night. About, this was a Wednesday night. I'm just trying to think about how busy it was and what time of the week. So was. I assumed like like saunas are almost always. It, there's not a night that's not busy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's I shouldn't say that. There's Normal, and then there's busy. Okay. And even on a normal night, like to take example, perfect example would be Subway in Melbourne. Any random night, you're going to have 15 to 30 people in there. Okay. I mean, it's... At any given time of night, kind of. At any given time of after, from 4 p.m. on. That's pretty good. So I was like, all right, I'll give this a go. How bad could it be? Plus, I didn't want it to be inundated with people, because, yeah. and I didn't know what to expect, to be absolutely honest. But literally, this place was um, run down AF. I mean, it was, like like I said, it was built in 1979, and all they put in there afterwards was NBN. Right. So, oh, so anybody in the U.S., NBN is our national broadband network. internet network. Yeah, yeah, so it's the fast, high-speed internet. So... I peeked my head and I didn't know, it, it, again, nobody's there to greet you. That's a little bizarre. So I'm like, I don't even know where I'm really allowed to go without talking to somebody. Yeah. But I peeked my head in one of the little booths and the, it had a little door 
about groin height <laughs> on on the you know, so I was going into an end one, yeah. but it was a door about the size of of like a notebook or an iPad. It was large. Okay. And That's it had, pretty good size. You had, it, it was kind of latched, so you'd have to unlatch it and then open it. So I'm assuming both sides would have to unlatch and open. Makes Not sense. Bad. Okay. Fair enough. But it was grungy as. So I was like, I am like not. Like the door was grungy? Everything oh. in there was grungy. Um, and and admittedly, as I know, it was, I mean, it's great, but it's terrible. Um, and as I'm walking around, I mean, you could hear a guy in there going, uh, uh, by himself, you know, it was, which not judging, we all make funny mm-hmm. sounds, but it was just like shocking because <laughs> <laughs> that's literally the first thing you hear and see at the top of the stairs is a closed door moaning. So not going to judge. Mm-hmm. So then facing the, the, the video booth, if I look to my right there, I jumped out of my skin because there was a mannequin in lingerie <laughs> there. Don't expect to see that every day. You're, you're probably thinking it's a real person too, as you turn around. Yes. But of course yeah. it's just the mannequin and just lingerie. Uh-huh. They didn't take the time to put shoes on it or a wig. So it's a big, <laughs> tall, scary, alien looking mannequin. And then there's to the left of the mannequin is a is a big door with a numeric keypad, so like an escape room kind of thing. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't go to an escape room by accident? Just wait. A sexy escape room. Well, not so sexy escape room. So then there was another set of two mannequins in lingerie, mm-hmm. and you kind of sneak through the to the left after this room. That's all that was in that room was a door and then three mannequins, four mannequins. I don't know. Oh, and I think there was a vending machine. Uh, with snacks and drinks or something like that. I don't know. So in case you need some nourishment while you're in the room, rehydrate. I don't know. (laughs) So you go in and then there was the first in this next room, there was the first few products that I saw and it was like to call it a sex shop. I honestly only think they sold some stuff just because they by law had to sell some stuff. Right. So walked in there and there's little stuff around. Then I turn to the right, and it's a room full of DVDs that you can purchase. Mm-hmm. You walk farther on, and I'm assuming this is where the the sauna part was, the men's, the Ram. Ram lounge. But it, it wasn't a sauna. It was just three or four more booths. It does say on the description for that part, our lounges provide a safe, comfortable, and discreet venue for men to meet other like-minded men in total privacy. Sit back, relax, and enjoy a complimentary coffee or tea while watching the latest movies in a clean and comfortable male-only environment. Okay, so I must have missed that and completely. And they have, they do show two guys sitting there with nice little mugs, fully dressed, on okay. the little sofa. I must have missed that completely because I did not see that, and I did not see where that could have been. Mm. And nor did I see where the peep shows were. Spoiler alert. But... I wasn't really looking for the peep shows because what I really wanted to do, I wanted to experience an adult cinema. I wanted to go into a cinema and like, I'd looked up to see what goes on and like on some of the websites like RHP, Mm -hmm. people would go there and meet and they would have sex. Like people would pick up people and then go into this room and have sex. In the cinema room. In the cinema room. Okay. I'm like, all right, that'd be kind of fun to watch. I don't think I really want to participate, but that'd be kind of fun to watch. So I go in to the little person who is behind the counter and I say, hi, I want a ticket to the cinema. And they said, okay, $17. Holy Se- shit. That seems is... pricey. Yeah. But I got a receipt because it's tax it's, deductible. You can see a real movie for that. Not in Australia, but no, I guess you can. Yeah. 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 yeah I guess yeah. you can right up the road. Um, so I said, okay, here's my cash. Can I have a receipt? I was given a receipt because it's tax <laughs> deduction. The things we do for the podcast. And I bravely walk up to the door and push it in. Now, describe to me what you see in the picture on the website, and I will describe to you what I saw. Okay, so the picture on the website, it looks like a pretty decent-sized cinema. Uh, I would have said, at least from the angle that the picture is taken, probably at least, I would say at least 70 50 to 70 seats. Okay. And it looks like it has like big, huge slab tiles on the wall. Kind of, uh, or could be that little, um, like the little bit of uh, textured fabric stuff that you sometimes see in cinemas down the aisle. Yeah, yeah, to make it quiet, to yeah. absorb sound. And then there's this big, huge screen with a little stage in front. Mm-hmm. It all looks very uh, clean, very modern. 
The seats are blue. Yeah. Kind of a purpley hue in some of the light, but you know, I'm assuming that's just the lighting. But it, yeah, it looks very clean, very modern. The seats do look to be vinyl. And there are probably about 12 different people, both male and female, in here. Yeah. Which, you know, I would not, I've, it just sounds like more of a male kind of centered venue. Um, but then as I scroll down, so that's in the, like, the kind of first initial picture. So it looks really nice, really clean, kind of classy. Yeah. You know? And then Blue I. Blue classy, maybe. Yes, yes. But still classy. And so I scroll down, and there's a Club X Bendigo movie preview lounge, very same picture as the other one before. And then there's one Oxenford Blue Class Cinema. Don't know where that is, but that one looks ginormous. It looks much, much bigger, and there's nobody in that one. Um, but, yeah, they all look quite roomy. They look, yeah, just kind of clean, classy. Yeah. Uh, I would assume vinyl seats because it's easy clean up, I right? I assume you know? so, yes. Yeah, yeah. and the, there's a little stage in front of the cinema that I don't know if anybody ever acts anything out on that, but, you know, maybe. Yeah. I guess if you're feeling... Feeling like you need to get up and do Risky. some acting? Yeah. yeah. So So what was it actually like? So you walk in and immediately you, you open the door and you're met with a wall. And you go to the right for a couple of steps, mm -hmm. much like a normal theater. Um, and then you go down a very short hallway, two steps, and then hang a left. And there you are. The screen's to your right and all of the seating is to your left. Now, when I say all of the seating, mm -hmm. there were... Two rows of seating, two leather, um, vinyl, pleather, not real leather, two plastic lounges, like maybe love seats, two seats, and then an, a short aisle way, and then three, so I guess three rows, but one row was only one seat, three one seats, and they were like, again, just like these love seats, pleather, vinyl, plastic, whatever, one seaters. So at most in this theater, you could seat seven people. Yeah. So this looks, like I said, much larger. It looks like there's yeah. at least what, seven rows yes. and then probably eight to 10 across easily, probably more than that because it goes out of the frame. Um, yeah. So that's clearly not the entire theater could fit in our living space, our living area. Not not even our, li no, let me rephrase that. In our living room, our family room, wherever, where our TV and couch wow. is, the entire theater could fit there. That's impressive. There was a stage uh -huh. under the screen, and the screen was a decent size. It was the smallest that you would probably have ever seen in a movie theater. Okay. So tiny, but, you know, not terrible. Right. Uh, but for the size of the room, that sounds pretty good. Yes. Uh, there was a stage, and on that stage was one of those blue gym mats that you see oh, in high yeah. schools. Mm. Yeah, a wrestling match. Uh, a wrestling mat, I should say. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, were you picturing a wrestling match on it? <laughs> no. Um, I was picturing all the gross things we're living mm. on. So I'm in a jacket because it's fucking Adelaide and it's cold. Yeah. And I walk in here and I immediately, it was one of those, you walk in and immediate buyer's remorse. <laughs> like, no. So you, I looked around and I was like, oh, I feel like Job off of Arrested Development. <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. There's one dude in there and he's sitting in the far back corner mm -hmm. and as far away so, from me as he could get. Like three feet away? Yeah, that was more, <laughs> it was like realistically maybe maybe three meters away, okay. so three yards. It wasn't it wasn't far, right. fifteen twenty feet. So he's watching the porn that's on the screen, which had a scene had just ended, uh, and another scene was about to start, and it was one of those like he's he's clearly rubbing his crotch. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't fucking care. Yeah. So I sat in the very first seat I could get to. Mm -hmm. Now. I feel like I made a mistake because I feel like I should have tried to maybe go into the back row because at that point then he's behind me. So I can't even see what's going on behind me. Mm. I can see him when I'm watching the screen out of the corner of my eye. But, you know, I assumed that that most in this, I know what you get when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. Uh, but I assumed that he was probably straight. Okay. Or... Yeah, yeah, straight. That's what I assumed. Sure. But you never know. No, you don't know. And I, that's my fault. I shouldn't have made that assumption. So I sit down, jacket still on in this chair, <laughs> and what's playing? 
Meet the Fuckers, the triple X porn parody. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So look, I like Meet the Fuckers. Yeah. I think it's funny, but I really don't want to watch a porn parody of it because... Even though we like porn parodies. I do love porn parodies, yeah. but a porn parody... It has to parody, parody something that has sort of a niche, like a Marvel movie, or it's a musical, Fair enough. Okay, or, yeah. you know, She-Hulk. Yeah. I mean, that's the Smurfs. I mean, I would totally watch a porn parody of the Smurfs. <laughs> but Meet the Fuckers, while the name is great, yeah. it's also, I mean, come on, that's a softball. I mean, it's easy to hit out of the park. So, however, it's starring Evan Stone. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who Evan Stone is, if you've ever watched the most expensive porn movie ever made or was at the time pirates yes um he's the captain oh, the dude's okay. fucking ugly yeah. i'm sorry evan stone i'm sure you're a wonderful nice guy you're ugly as sin he's got this like and he's at this point Do you now think he still is or is this just like when the movie was made uh, i i don't know i'm gonna have to look up a recent picture of him now yeah i mean like he so I'm looking him up on... He was born in 1964, so he's 54 right now. Mm -hmm. But even at his prime, he wasn't uh, attractive. I don't find him attractive, no. He's kind of got that long Fabio blonde hair, but yeah. it's kind of greasy. And I he's, don't know. Honestly, he's too big for me. Yeah. he's a But not in a teddy bear way. It's really funny, too, because he's won tons of porn awards. Um, it's all about the acting. <laughs> Like, and that's the thing. Like, I don't even think his sex is that entertaining to watch. So it was one of those porn that I came in on the very last scene and it's him and two women. And it's one of those porn movies where like the woman, as she goes down on him, like she gets two inches of cock in her mouth and she's like, <laughs> because that's what they think that guys want. Uh -huh. um, they want to hear that gagging. They want to hear that gagging. And let me tell you, both men and women who put penises in their mouth, nobody wants to hear that. That's disgusting. It's gross. And nobody wants to hear that. If your partner wants to hear that, or if you want to hear that, I need you to think really hard about yourself. And what is it about that do you really want to hear? Like, why, why do you want to hey, hear that? everybody has their thing. Don't yuck someone's I'm yum. I'm not going to yuck someone's yum. If that is your kink and you really like to gag people with your penis or like to be gagged with a penis, that's great. But the problem is, I don't think it's as common as porn makes it. I would tend to agree with that. The other thing was the spitting. There was a lot of gagging and then a lot of that thick saliva that comes from gagging mm -hmm. and then a lot of then taking it into your mouth and spitting it into the woman, other woman's mouth, which I honestly uh, find degrading because they're not doing it to the guy yeah. and he's not doing it to them. It's only the women doing it to one another. And I feel like anytime spit is used in a non-even manner where everybody's getting spit on or spit at – uh, or spitting, then it's all about degradation. That really does not turn me off. So, and again, but seeing spit used in that manner, no matter who it is, whether it be male, female, whatever, it just does not turn me off. And again, if spit is your thing, then fucking a, find somebody who likes to be spit on or wants yeah. you to, or wants to spit on you. That's totally cool. But when you see it in porn, it doesn't feel like. Again, it feels like a. Doesn't, submissive woman degradation. They're degrading the feel, female. I was going to say, it doesn't feel natural no, to me. No, not at all. Yeah. And then they do the thing where the, the she's, of course, clearly choking on the penis. And it's just like, ugh. It just, the whole thing wasn't hot. So I am not getting aroused at all. Right. But I spent 17 bucks. I'm going <laughs> to fucking sit in here and watch this goddamn movie. Problem. So out of the corner of my eye, I can see dude in the back has unzipped and he's just playing with himself. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's fine. So this porn finally ends and the next one starts and it is the, a style that I tend to like. It's a very pretty Spanish young lady and it's one of those meet on the street porn Okay. where a clothed lady is on the street. The camera holder walks up to her and starts talking to her. She flirts with the camera holder. He flirts with her mm -hmm. and he gets her to flash him. And then he's like, why don't we go back to my place? They go back to his place. He gets her naked. And then another dude comes in and fucks her. I kind of like yeah. that. Um, that sounds pretty good. It's, 
And she, this girl, I have no idea who this lady was. She's hot. So, and it was all in Spanish, which also something. So it doesn't really matter it, what they're saying. I know. It's it, just it, a beautiful language. Honestly, it really turned me on <laughs> that. I, I mean, I should understand it because high school and college Spanish, but I didn't. So we, I'm sitting there and I'm like, at this point, I'm like, actually. Wait, in your high school and college, did they teach you like, like porn um, like I, porn Spanish and sexy Spanish? I know some. I know enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that oftentimes I am considered a mariposa. Uh, sometimes those are derogatory, but I'm taking the word back. Um, if you don't know what that means, look it up. Uh, and then I also know chupar, which is mm-hmm. my favorite verb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my favorite command, which I plan on giving later, is chupame. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, if you don't know what that is, look <laughs> it up. Uh, but yeah. And then I also know Tengo Un Gato and Los Pantalones. Yes, we know. You say that one a lot. <laughs> uh, which, if you don't know what that one is, watch the movie Blue Streak with Martin Lawrence. I know. Don't, don't fucking ask. Okay, anyway. Maybe we should go back to the porn. <laughs> so back to sexy, sexy Spanish porn. Uh, so at this point, dude's like full on erection and he's just like not cranking it yet, but he's jacking off. And I'm like, all right. Okay, so time out. Yeah. Were there like tissues anywhere in the cinema? Yes. So when you first walked in, there was a, you know, those tissues that like the toilet paper where you pull out one yes. piece of toilet paper at a time. There was one of those little the things, little squares. but it was laying on its side, like the dispenser. And it was down in the front next to a little garbage bin mm. that had a bunch of crumpled up ones around it <laughs> where people clearly missed. Um, there are no condoms nor lube in this mm. space, okay. which red flags for Bradford. Mm. But at this point though, I'm like, you know, and I, this isn't bad. So I unbutton my jeans, start stroking myself through my underwear, going, I don't really want to get my ass on this seat. Mm. I'm, you know, two layers. I don't even want to pull my jeans down. <laughs> I, I like, because even though my underwear would still be touching it, my underwear would still be touching it. So I do take my jacket off because I was getting warm. It was stuffy in there. So I take my jacket off and sit next to me. And I'm like, I'm just playing with myself over my over my underwear and watching this beautiful lady and speaking her Spanish. And so at this point, it's in the show where she's now naked and other dude comes in and they start making out. And then she starts going down on him. And I'm like, actually, I am getting aroused. Mm. This is cool. Awesome. Uh, so I just... Still unbuttoned jeans, button plus, unbuttoned jeans, and I take the underwear. I, I open them just enough that I can take the underwear and put it under my balls. So, like, <laughs> cock and balls are just hanging out over the underwear, like, spilling out. Just enough. Just <laughs> enough that I can, like, just sit there, spread wide, and I'm just sort of stroking myself just slightly. And I kind of look over my shoulder, and at this point, dude's ankle, uh, pants are around his ankles, underwear as well, and he's sitting fully bolt upright and just, like, wailing on his cock. And I'm like, dude, your asshole is so close to that pla- that plastic. Like, the only thing that's protecting that <laughs> brown starfish right now is just, like, three centimeters of fat on your butt to keep it above mm-hmm. the plastic. Mm-hmm. And I would not want any orifice of mine touching that plastic. None. <laughs> but, dude, he's all about it. And so, at this, then, you know, moving on a little more, lady is now bent over the couch being fucked, which... You know me. That is my thing. Like, Mm -hmm. I love that. The the idea of being bent over a couch, either if it's me or if it's you or if it's clearly anybody. um, (laughs) I really like that. Uh, So I'm like, all right. So I'm kind of working my junk. um, And I'm like, this is really good. And then dude pulls out and comes all over her back. And then that's the thing that sets me off. Uh, So... I, I'm like, I sort of want to wait. I don't want to orgasm just yet. Mm-hmm. But at that point, it was too late. So I'm like, what am I going to fucking do? Because I don't have tissues. I, uh-huh. So I just kind of came all over myself, all over my stomach and, and, and pubes and whatnot and into my hand. Uh, and I t- kind of look over my shoulder. And at this point, dude is standing up, like fucking working it. Oh, and God. he comes all over the seat in front of him. Thank God you didn't sit in front of him. Well, word. You know, and I will say, there was a couple of times I was like, maybe I should just ask him. You know, like, 
yeah. it's like, this is a maybe this is a sauna thing. It's like, hey, do you want a blowjob? Like, I'm happy to give you a blowjob while you watch the porn. Because um, he was attractive. He was not like one of those sleazy mm-hmm. guys that you might imagine. Um, you know, like I was clearly. Uh, who would who who we all at least imagine go to these places? He was a nice looking guy. You know, young, and I was like, I'd, I'd give him a blowjob. You know, I'd throw him a beach. But then he came all over the chair in front of me, and I was like, Oh my god! You know they don't clean that up. Yeah, no. you know they just let it dry. Yeah. And then now I'm thinking, I need another layer. I should have sat on my jacket. Like yeah. I need underwear, jeans. So, so I'm covered in cum. Have we dry cleaned all of these clothes that you were wearing? <laughs> <laughs> they were well. That's why when I got home, I put them all in the wash. Right. Uh, so I, I've come all over myself. And it had been a long time since I'd had an orgasm, so it was not an insignificant amount of mm-hmm. of, of man juice that I've juiced out of myself. <laughs> man juice. <laughs> the juice was loose. <laughs> and so I'm like, what do I fucking do with this now? What do I do? Do you just like wipe it with your shirt and just kind of stick it all to so you? So I was like, you know, it was it was it got to that point where in my head I was like, well, you're just a dirty little slut. You should walk home in this. So I pulled the underwear up, put the shirt down, tucked the shirt back in, and I was like, my underwear was soaked. It was soaking <laughs> through my jeans where you could see it in spots. And I was like, yeah, I'm a dirty little whore. I was like, honestly, in my head, it was uh-huh. like, and then. Fuck it, I'm getting wrecked again. I'm like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> so I'm like, no, I'm not going to do this again. So I zipped up, sort of put my jacket on, zipped it up so you couldn't see all the cum that's the soaking stains. through my jeans. Yeah. Uh, and I left. I, well, I also walked over, grabbed a single tissue, wiped off my hands, and then threw it away in the bin, not on the floor. And I left. And as I left, the dude's just sort of standing there with his hand on the chair in front of him, just like holding his junk and deep breathing. He kind of looked at me and he gave me that, you know, that look that you get like, hey, we shared something. <laughs> Have a good one, mate. It was kind of <laughs> like that. It was one of those, like, he kind of did the head cock and uh-huh. eyebrow and he's like, we're buddies now. We both suffered through this, although I think he enjoyed it a little more than I did, though I did have orgasm, so maybe I didn't hate it that much. Yeah. So the long and short of it was I left. I left out the back door. Um, that way the people at the restaurant couldn't see your cum stains. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, and, you know, as I'm walking home, it's like the, the underwear is kind of wet. It was just kind of like, it was disgusting. Uh-huh. But in the hottest kind of way, because like there's something really nice and maybe it's just me, but there's something really nice about doing something that is so fucking dirty. Like it is, there is no way to look at that experience and go, it's not sanitary. (laughs) It probably wasn't smart. Uh, It wasn't dangerous, but it was just disgusting. Mm -hmm. It was fucking disgusting. And I was thinking about on the way home and thinking like, or way back to the apartment or hotel, that basically what I did in that blue cinema is really no different than those women spitting in each other's mouths. I just like, because I was like, oh, that's gross. But now I'm thinking like most people would look at what I did and go, that's gross. (laughs) And so I was like, you know what? Good for those women. At least they didn't have to pay $17 to do it. They got paid, hopefully, a lot more than $17 to experience that. Hopefully, yes. So, in the end, I can't say I would never do it again. Mm -hmm. Part of me now, once there's one in Sydney, Club X, that has the the same blue cinema. Oh, God. Part of me wants to take you. If we do, we're taking ponchos and we're sitting on the ponchos. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Just garbage bags. Bring out yeah. the garbage bags. That's probably better. Yeah. You know, I think there would be something. It's just something weird. There's something just really arousing about something so fucking dirty. And I, and this is a couple levels deeper than uh, the saunas. Because mm-hmm. the saunas can be kind of grungy at times. But this was just. It sounds really <laughs> grungy. But I really want you to see it. And I sort of want to see how people, guys in particular, uh-huh. particular, treat you in a place like this. Because uh-huh. I know how you are, and you're a girl, and I'm kind of curious how that would go over. All right. We're going to have to have a Club X date. Yeah. Maybe we can bring the gentleman. I can't say I'm super excited about this, but I am curious. And I- yes, if I have to suffer through this, I think he needs to as well. <laughs> you know what? We should rent the whole place out. Get Lawrence oh and Jess. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Do we get a group discount if we get 10 or more people? Oh, and, but wait, there's only seven seats. And then, well, I don't know how big the one is in Sydney. Fair enough. But, you know, we could take in a black light. Mm. And I think that that would be something that our Instagram followers would love to see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, I may take a black light anyway. And if nobody's in there, just sort of black light the place and just see uh-huh. what it looks like. But, uh, so that was my experience. Mm. Yeah, black light it. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Look, is it something I would do immediately? No, but I can see myself doing it in a year or two, right. going again and just just to check it out. I would honestly like to. Apparently, Saturday afternoons is the place. It's you know the time to go because then you have more couples, you have more people there. Really? Yeah. Oh, because of the store, not because of the cinema, or no, in the cinema. The cinema. Too? They go into the cinema. Oh. Uh, you know, reading through the RHP message okay. boards, you know, I've read about people who would pick up guys, couples that would pick up single guys. That would make sense. And then they would go into the okay. room and, and fuck, you know. I, I gotta be honest, I'd sort of like to watch that. There's something mm. kind of interesting about... I think it would be interesting just because I like to people watch, to just sit back and watch the ebb and flow of people and, and to watch their interactions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, it was... Seems odd, but okay. Well, what we could do is we could take cum rags to sit on and then just leave them. <laughs> because then they're like... It's like it's like Hershey leaving things or like uh, Mr. Hopper putting bed hopper stickers everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in Australia and you see a bed hopper sticker around somewhere... Yeah, Mr. H was there. You know Mr. H was there. Fucking bed hoppers. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was uh, that was what I did in Radelaide after yeah. you left. I went back to the hotel, made a had a big, nice, long, hot bath, and it sounded um, like you needed a scalding bath. After I did. That. I did have a nice <laughs> scalding bath, and then I played with uh, a rimming butt plug. It was great. Mm. Yeah. So that was basically my weekend <laughs> my, or my Wednesday. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. Okay. After that, I need a shower. <laughs> uh, more, I think everybody out there needs a shower. A quick top-up of wine, and let's do a quick commercial break. Sure. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And with our powers combined, we, we are, are the, the multi Podcast. Podcast. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating... If you enjoy sucking at communication... And you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But... If you want some out-of-the-box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself, or learn more about non-monogamy, then come check out the Multi-Amory Podcast on the Swingset Network at swingset.fm, the Swingset FM Android app, or at multiamory.com. And we're back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So... What's the other thing we want to talk about tonight? Because I, I, ran, I managed to stretch that story out. I highly recommend people looking on the website just to see what they it does what not they're selling. Look anything like what you described? Like even just the seating alone. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> much. I mean, and it looks much classier than it felt like it a was. dungeon and not in the good sexy way. <laughs> so speaking of dungeons, uh, this past Friday at our secret spot, they hosted Threshold. Yes, which we. Went to Threshold probably three plus years ago. After, yeah. It was after we moved to Sydney. So Threshold is a, a kind of a kink BDSM party. And so they have, I don't know how it's actually advertised and whatnot, but it's, they basically have St. Andrew's crosses. They have spanking benches. There's a spot for needle play. Uh, there's just kind of all different play areas for the people in kind of the BDSM scene. And... It was a lot of fun. We went. We loved it. Yeah, it was great. we went a number of times, and then just I think we missed a couple because of scheduling, and then it just kind of fell out, and then we haven't been back. Yeah. So threshold is now being done at our secret spot, or at least this past one was, and so we were like, hey, let's let's go and and check it out, and uh, we ran into Lawrence that afternoon. Well, admittedly, admittedly, I pulled the plug on that. We were gonna go with the gentleman yes. and then you and I, and then he had to bail. And then honestly, I was just like, I don't have the energy to go. I really didn't want to go. Yes. Continue. But I still really wanted to go and because I really enjoyed it. And I was like, you know, even if we don't play, I just kind of, because it's been so long since we've been to the party, I wanted to just get back in the environment, see it, feel it, 
just kind of, you know, be in that again. And ran into Lawrence that afternoon, and uh, he needed, mentioned that he could use some help behind the bar. And so we jumped on that one because, well, I jumped on that because I wanted to go and I knew that, you know, Bradford's a lot more comfortable behind the bar. And so we agreed to go to Threshold and help out behind the bar. So we got there, I think it started around nine o'clock and we got there just slightly before that, kind of helped get everything set up in the last little bits. And people started arriving right at nine o'clock. And I will say that it's a different atmosphere when people come and there I would say that as the night went on you could kind of feel the vibe shift a little bit because the people that came more towards the beginning were very much more of a come and play do your scene do yeah. your thing and then maybe move on and they didn't really stay all night long yeah so it started to kind of really ramp up and get busy around 11 o'clock or so and it got a bit more crowded at that point. There were a lot, I would say, a lot more people kind of getting into play at that point. Different types of scenes. I didn't get to see a lot because we were behind the bar. Yeah. I could hear a lot of spanking, a lot of flogging. I know there was some A lot whipping. of moaning, a lot of crying, a lot of, like happy crying. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, happy cries. Uh, yeah. And I know that there was, I don't know how much early in the evening, but later on in the evening, there was some needle play. Yes. Uh, so I Which did, I completely missed all of that. I saw a little bit when I went uh, on a cup run to go up and, and get cups gotcha. and things. But I it was I was focused on drinks and not necessarily watching what was going on. So yeah. Uh, but it was interesting though because there was there was still play. It's you know, still sex on premises. I'm not sure Not very much. I would say not a lot. Because there was only one room with a bed in it, and that was the shackle room. Right. Yeah. So there wasn't a lot, of course, compared to a normal night, yeah. but but there was a little bit still. And yeah, it was I did see the glory hole used. Which which is nice. And I heard someone say that it was the first time that they've ever used a glory hole Aww. and they were really excited about that. That's exciting. So yeah. Yay. So yay, glory holes. <laughs> They're awesome, fantastic things. Except when they have grungy doors on them. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was, it was really interesting and it was, I really liked seeing all the different outfits that people came in. There was some really fantastic yeah. outfits. People put a lot of effort into them. Uh, there was a whole variety of outfits, of people, of personas, and yeah. that type of thing, which was also quite exciting and entertaining, and I, I like that. Yeah, me too. It's, it's fun to interact with a whole variety of people. I will say that from being behind the bar, because we, we didn't get out and get to wander around, we interacted with people basically from behind the bar yeah. most of the night. And there were a few people that we knew from previously uh, different areas and or from the swinger life, world or from the swinger world or yeah. pendulum parties right yeah. so there were a few people there that we knew and interestingly at the beginning of the night the people that we interacted with were a bit more transactional at the bar it was very much come up I want my drink give me this da, da, da. I don't want to talk to you yeah yeah I don't want to sit around and chit chat I just want my drink and I want to go on and kind of midway through the night and later that that shifted and so there was a bit more chit chat there was a bit more just conversation flirting how's it going what are you, you know you enjoying yourself that are kind you of doing? thing yeah and it was yeah and i like that it was a bit more kind of what we're used to in that environment and i don't know if that's a shift in the crowd or if it's because Admittedly, this is the setup was different than most threshold parties, and so people. It's a brand new venue. Yeah, so people had to learn. You know, you come to the bar, drop off your alcohol, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is kind of how it works, and so I don't know if it was just people kind of figured it out after a little bit and watching each other, learning from each other. This is how it works, kind of thing. But another thing I noticed about the crowd from behind the bar is that almost everyone brought their glasses back up. Yes. They brought their cups back up. They were so well behaved. Yes. Many of them reused their cups as yes. well. As opposed to just dump them in the sink and get a new glass. They wouldn't take drink. another glass. Yeah. They would be like, no, no, just pour it in this. Yeah. Okay. So it was very different than what we're used to because that doesn't happen a lot, which is why we kept doing cup runs to look, go around and find glasses and cups. And people were holding on to them. People were reusing yeah. them. And, and Oftentimes, we would pick up a few here and Listen there. Listen and learn, swingers. Yeah, we would pick up a few here and there, but for the most part, people brought them back. Even just empty ones, they would just come drop them off. Yeah. And yeah, it was fantastic. It was just, it was kind of one of those, you don't realize, I'm going to say how much of it, not necessarily a difference that it makes, but what a shift it was in behavior until it kept happening again and yeah. again and again. And it's like, wow, this is 
really kind of different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my only comment on that was the kink community, this in Threshold, was a little more demanding. And I think, mm. honestly, it's not uh, not a, a knock against them. Mm-mm. It's just that I think that many of them were coming up and ordering were doms. And they would walk up and instead of going, may I have a Coke, please? Like we're used to with the swinger community, mm-hmm. they would come up and go, Coke. <laughs> and, you know, admittedly, I'm there in my, I've got a collar with a puppy tag on it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You know, mm-hmm. and like, and would get it for them. But part of me is like, next time I won't be collared. Yes. For sure. Uh, but I'll be like, Coke, what? <laughs> like, I'll be a little sassier uh-huh. because I'm not part of your scene. No. Uh, but they were all very polite it was just they were demanding, and there's you tone know, of voice. It was that tone of voice yeah. of, I'm saying something that I fully expect you to mm-hmm. deliver on, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm not going to say please because I know you're going to deliver on it, mm-hmm. and so it's just kind of, it's a funny kind of commentary on that, mm-hmm. which is it doesn't hurt you to say please. Listen no. up. Kinksters. So, I mean, it, it was, but it was fun. And it wasn't everyone, but there were no, definitely a handful yeah. that were like that. And you that. could tell that they were full dom. And yeah. like, and now I'm like, I'm not into brat play, but fucking A, if there's a bar in between us, I can totally brat yeah. play the shit out of you. Uh, so, but again, we're not part of that scene, no. so they shouldn't. Yeah, don't expect you're it. Not, but yeah, it, you shouldn't be that way, yeah. Everybody was very, you know, Everybody was nice. Yeah. Uh, nobody yeah. was abusive. No, no. It was just they were demanding. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was kind of a, a funny mm-hmm. sort of commentary on, on the situation because that makes sense, really. Uh, when you're in that headspace, sometimes it's hard to break out of it. Mm-hmm. And I know that some people can very easily switch from reality to play back to reality. Some people can't. Right. Uh, and I think that was really clear as to who could and who couldn't. Yeah. Which I think is interesting. It was yeah. neat. Yeah, it also was interesting to see how the space was used because the beds in the orgy room had been moved out. Gotcha. So that, that room is huge. That there's room, no mattresses in there. Yes, yeah, so that room was kind of opened up and the showers, there were some seats in there. I don't know if there was any kind of golden shower play or anything going on, but it's a great spot for yeah, it if anybody's into that. I would love to watch that. that. Mm. Yeah. I don't want it done to me, but I want to watch it. Yeah. And so, yeah, there was, it was interesting though, to see the different play spaces. They brought in another St. Andrew's cross. So there were two crosses because the other one was in the front lounge. Yeah. Room. Yeah. You're right. Yep. And, uh, yeah, the, there were three St. Andrew's crosses. There was one in the front lounge room. Uh-huh. There was one, the, the original one is still yes. in the playroom. And then there was one upstairs in the, where the massage tables, oh, cause okay. they moved the massage tables yeah. into the new orgy room cause they moved those mattresses out. Right. And because remember that St. Andrew's cross was plush. Yes. Which like, that's the St. Andrew's mm. Cross that I need. <laughs> like, because uh-huh. sometimes when being beaten, I like to take a little nappy. <laughs> and, like, uh-huh. I just need to just need to relax and fall asleep for a second. Which, honestly, there were times that when you and, and, and some another female uh, mistress uh, starts sm- smacking on me, I could very easily just kind of go to sleep. fall into that yeah. headspace of going to sleep. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the massage tables were moved into the the new orgy space, kind of back there where the spa yeah. used to be, which is really good because that was all tiled and everything, and that's where the needle play was. Yeah. Yeah, I only saw, like I said, I only saw a little bit, and it was, I would have said midway through. I heard a bit about how it all ended up, and it sounded pretty amazing. So hopefully next time maybe we'll actually be able to kind of take a peek and look at it and, and really enjoy it and, and see it for all that it's worth. Agreed. And yeah. also, I don't know... If the people who are experiencing the the needle play are listeners, mm-hmm. but um, both people I find extremely attractive. Yeah, um, one's a sub. I think one's more of a dom, mm-hmm. but I find them both so attractive. And we talked to them for so long. They're and lovely people. They're really. lovely yeah. human beings. And it was like I really like I mm-hmm. really like both of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And and one taught me how to pour champagne properly yes. or bubbly properly. And anyway, both lovely human beings. And yeah. I was I found them both adorable. Yeah. Oof. They're very lovely. So yeah, either one of them can beat and bite on me anytime <laughs> they want. Just throwing it out there if you listen. You better be careful what you ask for there, babe. Mm. And then there was a, a two gay couples mm-hmm. uh, that were running around and one of the fellas. Oh, you were so sweet on one I of them. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what it was about him. But you couldn't talk to him. I was so nervous around Every him. Every time you would go and hide behind the little door. No, it wasn't that. It was, <laughs> I honestly didn't mean to. It was that he would come up and, because I even told Lawrence and Jess, I said, mm-hmm. the next time he comes up, I want to serve him. 
Mm-hmm. Every time he came up, I was either putting away alcohol from somebody else I'd just served or getting alcohol for somebody else who was standing at the bar. Mm-hmm. It, or at one point, I was standing behind the little door mm-hmm. getting a bite to eat because I was starving. And you took uh-huh. and I was like, damn it. Every I was trying time. to catch your eye and you I know. were too busy sucking I didn't your face. Know. I was starving. <laughs> so it was really. Yeah. But I ended up like Jess, little Jess, was like, he was watching you wail on somebody and uh, he was really interested. And, he, and the guy was like, oh, well, little puppy, you know, I can, you can sign up for that. And everybody behind the bar was like, yes, but then I'd already been drinking a lot. So I was like, no. And plus I was wearing leather pants and it's a pain in the ass to take those off. So I was like, no, I, I want to, but no. And so then I gave him a card when he was leaving, I gave him a card and I was like, email me. And then he went downstairs and I was like, he doesn't even know who I am. He's not going to email me. So I walked down there and introduced myself mm-hmm. very uh, uncharacteristically from me, like having trouble making eye contact. Like, I really, you know, like, hey, how are you? I don't, and I don't know, honestly, I couldn't tell you what it was about him. There was just something chemical mm-hmm. that I was like, I really like this guy. And what have we talked about, about always saying yes? I tried. No, I'm not going to say yes to being, I, I, there are certain things you should never always say yes to. And one of those is if you have a fundamental thing about you, like I don't like to top or sub in a kink world if I've been drinking more than one or two drinks. And at that point, I think I'd had three quarters of a bottle of wine. I didn't realize you'd had that much. We took a bottle and a half of wine. How much Mm -hmm. did you drink? Maybe a glass, maybe a glass and a half. We left with no wine. Okay. So. Fair enough. That night I drank, I knew I drank a bottle by myself that night. And that was late when they left. Well, it was midnight, mid of the night when he offered. Mm -hmm. And at that point I was like, I'm well too inebriated to make a wise decision. So I knew enough to say Mm -hmm. no. But it was still, I mean, I really, I I find him cute. But anyway. Yeah. I'll never hear from him. It's all right. Yeah. (sighs) Maybe we'll see him around again. If not, so be it. Hmm. Yeah. That's right. They are other men. The other <laughs> men's. They all love me. No, they don't, but they should. So <laughs> I have oh. talent. Yes. yes so, um, yeah, but we ended up, like, I will say, I was not in the headspace mm-hmm. to be there when we got there. I thought that I was, I looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you did look pretty amazing. But. I like my eye makeup was. I was gonna say your eyes were on point. point. Yeah. Yeah, like I looked great. Yes. Once again, gentlemen, gentlemen, identifying people, fucking makeup. That's all I gotta say. If you do nothing else, a wonderful color correcting moisturizer mm-hmm. is amazing. It like it'll it'll take five to ten years off of you right there. Good color correcting moisturizer. Uh, beyond that, I like to do a little bit of mascara because who doesn't like? Well, you have beautiful eyelashes, so it just really. But they're highlights. kind of light. That's the problem. Right. They're dark at the base, but then they get. Light. I don't understand how if that you even let happens. Me finish. I was gonna say no, no. Really but how does high... that happen? Because they're exposed to sun more. Really? Um, but no, you have beautiful eyelashes, and the mascara just really accentuates and just even lengthens them more. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and you didn't have your glasses on, so you could really see them. Yeah, I'm purposefully fully yeah. purposefully didn't wear my glasses. Mm-hmm. But does it? Is it because of the sun? I don't know. It doesn't. Really because matter. if that's true, wouldn't our hair be lighter at the tips? Wouldn't we not need if highlighting? It's, if it's long enough, it does get lighter at the tips. Really? Yes. Huh. Look at people with long hair. I don't look at who don't color their hair. <laughs> How many people is that? <laughs> like any more? So yeah, it was. Um, yeah, and I, uh, yeah. So again, gentlemen, color correcting moisturizer, mascara is great. Eyeliner even. And I'd had eyeliner on as yes. well. But really, I mean, I think a lot of people look at me and I'm like, ugh, eyeliner, guy liner. Really, 1990s is over. It looks really good on but you. But it'll never die. I like it on you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Uh, mm. It was good. It was. Uh, it ended up being a really fun night. It took me about an yeah. hour and a half to kind of get into my groove, mm-hmm. and I think an hour and a half in, I was about on my third glass of wine. Wow! So that was when I was like, okay, I'm really having fun, mm. and that was also when when I was swinging drinks. So it was like I'm, yeah. I'm bantering with people because in the beginning I was just like, here's what you want, you know, I'll do what you want. Here's what you want. Here's what you want. Here's what you want. But later on, I was kind of 
goofy. Yeah. It was good. It was fun. Yeah, it ended up being a really good night. And we did have a lot of good interactions with people, even though we didn't get to go play or anything like that. It was just fun talking to people, hearing about their nights, hearing all the sounds from different parts of the club. I and love it was the just, sounds. Yeah. I really think Lawrence should record just the sounds and be like, you know, you've got rainforest, thunderstorm, orgy. For a white, for a white, white noise. noise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think as a white noise machine, I would totally fall asleep to orgy. <laughs> Like, honey, what do you want to listen to tonight? We've got... No, you wouldn't. You'd be wanking off to it. We have frogs in a rainforest. <laughs> we have um, s songbird meadow. Mm -hmm. We have the thunderstorm. And we have night of the orgy. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Can you imagine? Like on an airplane? Uh, actually, I would prefer it more as an alarm to wake up to that. Oh, my God. That would be better. We should totally do that. Yeah, we should. I think I have a new alarm tone now. We need to figure out how to do this. <laughs> Anybody out there who has an idea of how to do this, let us know. Well, uh, you just need the sound, right? Is that all the you need? sound bite. Can you do that? We can make it into an alarm. Yeah. Oh my God. We, okay. So this is, this will be my little plan. I'm going to try to do this. I want to record you during one of your like massive squirting orgasms, and then we'll put it on our Patreon page <laughs> so oh. that everybody can wake up to you coming. I thought you were going to say that we just needed to have an orgy so we can record the sound. Oh, we can do that too. Okay. But I want your orgasm sounds because your orgasm sounds can be amazing. Mm. And All right. Yeah, we can throw that on Patreon and people can download <laughs> yeah. it and they're like, this is art. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. So, cool. All right. Um, anything else you want to talk about, Threshold? No, no. I'm excited for, yeah, see what next month brings. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, I know you probably want to go and play, but I'm happily sitting behind yeah. the bar as a little hermit crab. That's okay, like, too. Yeah, so yeah. that'll be fun. Um, and then you can go and do your play thing, and I'll just sit behind the bar and be safe. Unless, <laughs> unless your little otter's there. Unless my little otter's there, then I'll make sure not to drink so much. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and wear clothing that comes off much easier. Uh -huh. uh, and wear a jock strap. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Planning. Planning. Got like, it. <laughs> future planning. You hear that, sexy otter? So if you want to ask us questions, mm -hmm. like what makeup do you use, uh, feel free to send us an email, theatomsoflove at gmail.com. Message us on any of our social medias. We are at By the By podcast just about everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we have had bunches of messages in the not- too far past that we we've tried to respond to some of y'all some of you have great wonderful questions and we really appreciate them but my god are they deep uh they so take some time they take some time to. and so we yeah. really we really appreciate the messages and we apologize in advance for the delay be of, patient. of getting messages back to you a few of you we will be sending emails to asking if we can talk about them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we would redact so that there's no way that anybody would know who nothing you are, personal. nothing personal, yada, yada, yada. But some of those are great questions that other people have. So if you've got more of those questions or some a question like that or something you wouldn't mind us talking about on the podcast, shoot us a message on any of our socials or over the, uh, inter or the Gmail interwebs. Uh, yeah, support us on Patreon www.patreon.com slash by the by podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how you can get discount codes to the next upcoming pendulum parties. We've got cum rags. You can even Skype with us for, uh, for, for, for one of the levels and yeah, I'm pretty, pretty excited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to say? No, I think we've covered it all. Woohoo. See you guys next yes, week. Thank you. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I'm Dylan Thomas, co-host of Life on the Swing Set, the podcast. We share our experiences in swinging, polyamory, and beyond. You're listening to a Swing Set Network podcast at swingset.fm.